The Man in Line with Andy Wint. Pastor Mike, good afternoon. Welcome to Man in Line on Manx Radio. Your chance to have your say. Our open line today between now and one tomorrow. A Bank Bank MHK, David Ashford of Douglas North will be on Man in Line. He's been passing several opinions recently, considerably uh, worried, he says. He mentioned the word crisis about our reserves and if the spending goes on as it is, so... If you want to get any questions in for David Ashford, and get him in nice and early by calling the answer phone on 682631. But uh, today we're open line. The infrastructure minister has been questioned this morning in Keys about what's happening with gas exploration in Manx waters. We'll hear from Chris Thomas shortly. And thanks to Big John in Laxey, a bit of positivity for you today. I did the hike. I did the Black, ha- Black Hut, uh, the mountain road to North Barul, the ridge. Uh, Deaf has replaced the walkway on the section of the roof and a fantastic job it's about a 150 meter walk um, way uh, other uh, uh, over the marshland. So well done, Deffer. Great job, and thanks for the photos, Big John. Well done to Deffer for that uh, walkway over the marshland. So Chris Thomas has been talking about Kroger. It's after Kroger. Um, the people behind the proposals to extricate gas off the coast of Mackauld return the funds given to them by their investors. They've, uh, of course, the uh, the proviso is that if they do get a license, then presumably the investment will come straight back. But they've given the money back. Uh, they said that government hasn't put in place regulations for the drilling to go ahead. Chris Thomas, MHK, and DOI are the government uh, department facing this. Chris Thomas, MHK's uh, patients appeared to be wearing thin this morning in Keys. I hate to say this, but I think it would be helpful, rather than thinking up you know, it fluffy insults to assert that fluffiness. It would be helpful to listen to the answers I've just said. That I've written to Kroger to say that I will attend and observe any forthcoming commercial meeting that they um, that they arrange in response to our letter. I've just said that quite clearly. I said previously that I'm fully cognizant, I believe, of every piece of communication um, between the Department of Infrastructure and other people in government and Kroger. I'm fully, I'm, I'm completely aware that people stop me in the street and shout at me and phone me up and shout at me. And there are lots of people out there with money at stake in this who want me to decide a certain way. I I really hope that the public of the other man and everybody in this court who represents them understands that the right decision needs to be made that will stand up in law and that will stand the test of technical advice. The the reason why the department gave a licence back in in 2018 was because it wants its hydrocarbons exploited. Why would you give a licence if you didn't want that? Since then the Climate Change Act has come in which has caused a variation of licence. Since then the timescale has been extended once. We've currently got a request to vary the licence again and we're doing this, we're making this decision properly and I believe um, I'm on the verge of getting the decision paper and with options inside it and it'll be then for the uh, for ministers collectively or for the departmental minister to decide exactly how we take this decision in terms of, um, in terms of law and technical advice. Any thoughts on this matter? Obviously, as Mr. Thomas said, there, there is a commercial concern at the back of this, but there's also a national resource, and the Isle of Man does hold the mineral rights to that particular section of seabed, and consequently, there will be revenues accruing and flowing to the Isle of Man were it to be exploited and the commercial uh, reserves were realised. How much it's going to be? Well, nobody quite knows. Everybody seems to have an opinion, and I just wonder what your thoughts are, bearing in mind the comments that Mr. Ashford's been making about our reserves and um, the money that we've accrued during the good years when we we were waxing fat off uh, a very healthy offshore finance industry. Now we have e-gaming on the Isle of Man. That produces an enormous amount of revenue for the government. Anyway, your thoughts on the matter, please. I'd really be interested to hear what you what you think about what's going to happen. 
Uh, some messages from the answer phone we've got today, including... I've just taken a carload of assorted rubbish to Douglas Amenity sites, only to find it's closed for three days. I've seen nothing, heard nothing about it. I suspect the other four cars which turned up at the same time as me, they didn't know either. Um, apparently, it may open next week somewhere off Richmond Hill. I wouldn't have thought that was ideal, but um, there's going to be some fly tipping. I've had to go back and put it all back in the garage. It's just so irritating. Anyway, thank you for listening. Bye. Um, I just want—I got a couple of messages in yesterday to say that uh, people hadn't received their courier, uh, so presumably that the note about that shifting the uh, the tip that the eastern amenity side uh, is is in there, but uh, uh, which also prompted me to think: I don't think I've had my courier for a couple of weeks. Um, I just wonder what happened to my uh, the young gentleman who delivers my courier. Anyway, if I mean, I think they've mentioned that it's happening, and they've told us that it's happening. It's been on the news several times that there is going to be a brand new eastern amenity site, which is going to be close to the um, energy from waste plant, the incinerator. Uh, but that's the situation anyway. Uh, text and email and WhatsApp, by all means, get in touch. Uh, so I just wonder what you're thinking about the infrastructure minister and um, where do we stand, really, with Kroger? What exactly do we do? Obviously, there are going to be environmental concerns. However, it's always been stressed this is a transitional fuel. This is a transition to get through to net zero. It's worth checking... But there are gas exploration places all over the world. All over the world, people are doing this. And they're drilling for oil here, there and everywhere. So do you think it's something that we should turn our back on or that we should embrace? I wonder what have you spoken to your um, constituency, MHK, about this? Uh, I think it's, this is a text to 505, I think it's greedy prospectors wanting to fleece the Isle of Man for the profits. The average man on the street can't afford to buy in uh, to Kroger, so this will make the rich richer, and the UK exchequer will rearrange our tax arrangement to pinch all the taxes too, says 505. I don't know, do you have some inside information on this? Um, uh, Pammy, is this true? Obviously, it's a commercial, um, it's a commercial arrangement. So, um, I mean, they are a commercial. It's not illegal. Capitalism isn't illegal. The Isle of Man lives and breathes by uh, capitalism. So, uh, is this something that we should embrace? The Kroger plan will work, says Mark. It will work. The increased population route is doomed to fail as in the long term, as you need more money. Uh, than they get in tax from the new influx. The problem's the size of government. Once again, the government has done the wrong thing. This ridiculous idea that we will be net zero by 2030, I think, is nonsense, says Mark. There's been no explanation as to how we'll achieve it. No other government is pretending that a country can run on solar and wind. It's obvious to a child why it won't work, namely the solar, of course, night time. Well... And as for wind during the calm times, well, what's going to happen? So only in very precise windows of set conditions will solar and wind produce electricity. So what do we do for the rest of the time? The so-called base load that we're all going to need if we're going to keep our fridges and microwaves and kettles and phone chargers on. We'll be relying on gas-powered electricity long before 2030. Given this fact, it makes sense to extract gas, even though it goes through a UK network. We take gas from that network at a lower price, reflecting our proportion production of a proportion of it, as well as taxes. The net take... The net take, says Mark, will be £250 million per year. If the gas lasts... 10 years, that's two and a half billion pounds. Money that we could then use to convert to a real carbon neutral economy, including a modular nuclear energy plant, uh, that being as safe as wind and wave power in terms of deaths per terawatt of energy produced. The government's letting all this potential slip through our fingers. Really, 
Is it time for a vote of no confidence in the current administration? I don't think there's a facility for that. You could call a requisition meeting, I suppose. But uh, quite where we, we get from here, and um, what exactly we do, what we can do, well, we'll continue to talk about it and continue to air opinions. And Juan's on now. Hi, Juan. No solar panels working today, Andy. Well, very, uh, I would imagine they are, just not very much. <laughs> not very much, yeah. We'll, we'll have to lose our HD resolution today on the televisions to cope with it, I suppose, wouldn't we? The, uh, good, um, good concert at the weekend that um, China Crisis was on. Roy Shuttleworth put two good concerts on at the weekend. And yes, uh, they, uh, our, our esteemed managing director was at the Centenary Centre in Peel for it. Absolutely excellent. I mean, it's great that someone's going to take the chance at, at going to these smaller venues around the island and putting something on, and, and uh, absolutely brilliant. Great little gig, great little venue. Um, ha- happened to notice when I was at Port St. Mary, I had to have a visit to the toilet while I was there, and did you know that um, Port St. Mary toilets are twinned with the Democratic Republic of Congo for the toilet twinning scheme? Isn't that amazing? The Democratic Republic of Congo? Isn't that amazing? That's how, that, it's another piece of information that will probably be stored in everyone's minds till probably half past twelve. How do you know that? I took a picture of the sign that was on it. It was. It was. I thought it was quite amusing. <laughs> And a picture of a little shack in, in the Congo. I thought it was quite amusing, but there you go. My word. Are you, are you going to the beach festival on Saturday, Andy? The, the Douglas Beach Festival's on. Uh, it's on... Uh, it is, actually. I think I've got my little piece of paper here that says, yes, the Douglas City Council Beach uh, Day is on Saturday the 1st, it, and uh, actually Max Radio supporting the event. Oh, there you go. There you go. Takes place now. on the Queen's Promenade with lots of exciting activities, metal detecting, bouncy castle... Stores, kite making, well being events, including free yoga and mindfulness, and the Sandcastle competition. I think they're doing rock climbing as well, so you can go for a swim over the rocks. Um, I think there's a visit to the way pipes, so you can have a look at the dogfish that have got no um, no food in their stomach. And um, I don't know whether it's, do you think Charles Gard will be doing a presentation as well on on the um, on, on on Douglas Promenade? I, I noticed a rare breed actually on the promenade the other day when I was going past, and it's the Me- Me- Metallicus rustus polus which seems to have taken um, a um, resting place on the grass between the, um, the, the, um, and the weeds between the sand on, on, next to the Hilton. All well, the hotels are available. I, but, thought um, that was a, I thought that was an art exhibition. No, no. It, I think it, it's originally come from the um, from from the, um, the the Polish railing family that used to be supporting the, um, the the railings on the promenade. But it's actually, I think it's actually nesting in the sand at the moment. Um, so I don't want anyone to disturb it because it, it might actually give birth, and we might have some new railings for the promenade. Wouldn't that be great? Charles Guards on Friday, by the way, is on Man in Line, so we'll ask him about Douglas Promenade. Yeah, and and you know. It, 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 Charles, I think the first time he came on and I mentioned um, a couple of things that I'd seen on his first video and I took a look the other day when I took a walk along the um, the bridge that goes to the museum which is very well signposted for um, uh, visitors to go on and I thought, I wonder if they've actually done a soft wash or cleaned the lights that are, that are there but that kind of hasn't happened yet so we're a bit it's, I suppose it's only been 12 months, hasn't it? Um, but they did find a nice piece of plywood to put over the fire hydrant that was bust open on the top of the car park so that looks nice and I think when you put a bit of paint on it it'll probably look even better um, so i um, be interested to see what Charles says uh, was there anyone at the um, assisted dying meeting last night that was in Douglas and have you heard yes, any more a bit, yes there were, I think well, one of our journalists was there and apparently uh, there were there were some uh, some quite excited opinions Yes, I believe so. I, I believe um, um, a couple of the politicians were there. Joni Farragher and um, Daphne Kane and, and Alex Allenson was there. Um, but there was some, um, I, I believe, there were, I, I wasn't there myself, I missed it, but I, I believe if there's anyone got any feedback on it, there was a couple of interesting points there from someone who actually had, had felt like committing suicide and actually, thank God, he said that he didn't and has got a quality of life now. So um, still a very emotive subject and don't know how that's going to go today in Keys. We'll see. All right, yep. thanks, Juan. Take care, Andy. Good to hear from you. Nick's on with us now. Hi, Nick. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Hi, Hi Nick. Can, can you hear me all right? I can, but if you could get your phone nearer to your mouth, that would be great. 
Uh, okay, I'm kind of using um, an earpiece, so it doesn't look, so it doesn't look like I'm not working. Uh, just bear with me, sir. Uh, all right, I've turned the machine down. Can you hear me okay? Okay, that's better, Nick. Thanks. Okay, yeah, I, uh, I just wanted to ask if anybody else had noticed uh, in Ramsey, uh, when I was driving past on Saturday, the police station is uh, flying the, the latest uh, pride flag. Um, and I was wondering, I didn't see any other flag above or below it on the same flag pole, and I was wondering why the gay pride flag takes precedence over our uh, national flag, and if anybody else... Uh, well, it is. That. I I, uh, presumably, that's because it's Pride Month. Okay, that's perfectly all right. I just thought maybe they would be uh, regarding inclusivity. They might include the mic flag, you know. Yeah. Well, they've, they've heard you. Yeah, I hope so. Um, and, I, and one other thing, I do absolutely 100% believe we should be, my, uh, you know, tapping into the Kroger gas field as much as possible. I mean, it's free money, isn't it? And it's energy that we need. I don't know why the government is sitting on their hands about it. And why, um, Nick, and why think, do you think some people are very hesitant and reticent and, and some possibly firmly against us exploiting whatever uh, minerals may be there? Well, I think that people are somewhat brainwashed on the green agenda and of, of tunnel vision and just think that's the only way that we are going to be going, um, which I, uh, uh, fortunately, I don't believe. I mean, the the green agenda is, I think, it's put forward by the, uh, well, instigated by the World Economic Forum and, and not for the, 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 the good of the planet, I, I believe. I firmly believe it's for profit. Um, and we do need these uh, fossil fuel resources. After all, fossil fuels are carbon, are they not? And we are all carbon. Everything, everything living is based as it's carbon based. Um, the, the amount of carbon dioxide we're putting into the atmosphere is minuscule compared to uh, most other uh, natural things like rotting leaves and trees and uh, uh, cows and other uh, you know uh, animals. Uh, and I don't think it's. I think you know our 0.04 percent of carbon that we're issuing. Uh, I've read somewhere that if we go below 0.02, things will die. You know, I mean, that might be a scare tactic, but, scare tactic. but um, as everybody knows, plants thrive on carbon dioxide. And without that, we're not going to have plants. And without plants, we're not going to eat. Okay. And I, I, I do think, well, about the Kroger thing, I do think the, the government is actually just kind of being, uh, doing what they've, what's been suggested to them by other uh, authorities elsewhere. Um, I don't think they're th thinking critically. I really don't. I think it's just they're just following in step. Okay. It's unfortunate. All right, Nick. We are sitting I on a gold mine. Appreciate your point, uh, Nick. Thanks for calling us today. All right. All right. All right. Twenty-five past twelve. Beastie's with us now. Hi, Beastie. Hello, Andy. Well, I've been phoning man in line for 24 years plus, and I've never been asked for my full details before, oh. which needless to say I did not give. Oh, my word. What's all that about then? My goodness. Anyway, I'm phoning to tell you that in my little lavatory up in Andreas here, I've got a picture on the wall, and it says, it's a picture of a lavatory, and it says, this toilet has been twinned with a latrine in Kabari, Rolpa District, Nepal. Latrine number 6017. It even gives the latitude and the longitude. Where is and this? there are Where? toilets all over the island that are twinned How with come? latrines. Well, it's a charity called toilettwinning.org. Um, it's under the Tier Fund registered charity, and what you do is you pay a sum, you give a donation, and that buys a latrine in an area in one of the very many poverty-stricken areas in the world where they don't have any toilets whatsoever, and your money buys a latrine, and then they send you a little certificate, you get a picture, obviously not of your latrine, but latrine but of a latrine um, and you've got this little certificate and that's obviously what Port St Mary did and I first saw this in the lavatory at the Midland Hotel in Morecambe that wonderful place good grief and, and I thought that looks interesting I'll look into that and the um, the place in St John's what's it called the the 
Mm-hmm. Oh, the mill. Nice. No, 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 the other one. Um, Timor oh, Mills. And, no, no, no. Anyway, there's an organisation on the island um, that I did it through, and but there are many on the island, and the one in Port St Mary happens to be twinned with the Congo, but it's nothing unusual, and it's a wonderful charity, and people should know about it. And if they've got um, money sloshing around, which many people on the island still do have, then this is something useful they can do with it. So that's what it's all about. Namaste, Beastie. Namaste. <laughs> I'm the same to you. OK, thanks for calling. <laughs> Goodbye for now. Good to hear from you. Uh, the private member's bill that could pave the way for the legalisation of assisted dying on the Isle of Man begins its passage uh, through Keys today. Uh, moved by the Ramsey MHK, Dr Alan Sun, who concedes it's a subject that splits opinion on the Isle of Man. He believes there's now a groundswell of public opinion that supports an individual's right to choose when to end their life. It's difficult to predict when we come to second reading and the debate on the bill in, in October, November, um, how that will go. But certainly uh, as the person promoting this bill, it's my job to try to give as much information to members so that they're going in to make the decision in an informed way. You're a former medical professional. Is it fair to say that your experiences in your working life uh, before joining politics have influenced your views on the topic? Uh, absolutely. I, 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 I'm still a practicing GP. I, I have spent, particularly since being on the Isle of Man and working um, up in Ramsey, quite a lot of time um, providing palliative care for people in their own homes. Um, I have great respect for our hospice movement here and what they do. But there are some people who, who can't or won't access those services. And some people, even with everything that hospice and, and medical science can provide, still want that ability um, to end their life in a way and at a time that suits them. Uh, and and I've come across many people who, who, who wanted that. At the moment, our law prohibits me even discussing it with them and prohibits me um, helping people for instance, prepare to go to Dignitas. And one of the the humbling things recently is to read, has been to read some of the obituaries in our local papers about people who've been to Switzerland to, to um, uh, access their assisted dying uh, provision or people who have died on our island but have really wanted to access that. And I think we need to be realistic about this. And, and actually, I think we can do better. Many of the people who maybe are uh, on the fence on this issue, who, who support the idea in principle, their concerns are checks and balances and how we can ensure that the legislation uh, to enable assisted dying is watertight and not open to abuse. Are you confident that that can be organised in that way? I am. We, we've look we can look at lots of other jurisdictions and the way that they brought in various laws I think that there will always be those people who say well you can't be a hundred percent certain that people won't be coerced or that people won't change their mind what what you can do is is uh, have the right safeguards for people to apply for assisted dying the right checks and balances to make sure they have capacity that they're not under coercion and also have a have a, a period of time for them to reconsider and always give them the option not to go through through with this. Dr. Allenson, Alex Allenson, MHK, was there with Simon Richardson. Uh, if you were at the meeting last night, uh, any thoughts on what was said? Hello, Andy. This is Daisy here. I've just got a question, and it's with regard to assisted dying, assisted suicide. Uh, I was wondering, where would you stand legally if you had a life insurance policy? Would they still pay out if, you, if you'd agreed opt for the assisted dying? Would your life insurance policy still stand? That's all. I just want to say also thank you, Andy, for your show and for giving people a voice. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Daisy. It's 29 minutes before one. Facebook. It's a great way to keep informed and keep in touch. And for businesses, you want to see high numbers of good reviews? Well, at IM1 Car Centre, we'd like to thank our customers for their generous and kind comments because we're proud to say that IM1 Car Centre has over 370 five-star reviews on Facebook. Customers know that we price our cars fairly, so visit us today on Facebook. 
Facebook or at Domain Road, Douglas. I am One Car Centre, the only island dealer with over 370 five-star customer reviews on Facebook. Choose Manx Glass and Glazing for supply only or supply and installation of a wide range of quality products. All types of glazing work undertaken, plus fabulous doors and conservatories in both traditional and contemporary styles. And whether UPVC or aluminium, you can be sure of excellent workmanship and guarantees at Manx Glass and Glazing. See for yourself when you visit the showroom on Snugborough Trading Estate. Manx Glass and Glazing. Quality and style since 1986. When you need a fitting memorial or headstone for a loved one, contact Manx Memorials in Peel. This long-standing family-run Manx company offer a wide range of granite and marble headstones and memorials, along with an island-wide inscription and renovation service. Manx Memorial's skilled professionals will take the time to help you choose a suitable memorial, and we're proud to say we'll beat other local quotes. Call 843-861 or email matthew at manxmemorials.co.uk. You get more than you think, but all that you need when you shop local with EVF. Because your local EVF filling station isn't just a place for fuel, it's where you can get delicious food to go. Chilled drinks, wines and beers, barbecue and summer essentials, from ice creams to surfboards, plus a great range of local products. Ellen Van In Fuels. Fill up, fuel up and get all you need to go. Open till late. Shop local with EVF. You know a charity that deserves to be highlighted for their good work. I'm involved with the Joey Dunlop Foundation. Our long-running Charity of the Week feature continues to support and promote the wonderful work of charitable organisations, large and small, here on the Isle of Man. I think I listen. Riding for the disabled Isle of Man. Breast cancer now, volunteering in the Isle of Man. Charity is the Danine Charitable Fund. And we want to hear your suggestions. If you represent a charity or have been helped or supported by a charitable group, drop us an email with a few details. Details 123 at manxradio.com and we'll do the rest. Autism and Man, Manx Charity number 607. The Charity of the Week on 123 and available as a podcast on your nation station. The Man in Line with Andy Wint. And uh, Julian's with us now on Man in Line. Hi, Julian. Hi, Andy. Uh, my solar thermal tubes aren't doing too much today. It's a bit dull out there, isn't it? Uh, I got a message in from, uh, just keep talking, I'll try and find him. It was, let me see, it's <laughs> Steve, I think, who says, uh, Steve, who just says, my solar tubes are work- working perfectly at the moment. So some of these uh, solar tubes are working. I don't know where exactly he is. Well, perfectly in what circumstance? It perfectly won't be 100% compared to a sunny day, I would suspect. Okay. Oh, no, it was uh, Mark in Peel who just said solar panels are working fine today. Our roof panels are currently producing 1.2 kilowatt hours, which is six times what the house is using. Or a third of a kettle. Yes, but anyway. but unless you turn the kettle on, <laughs> yes. Anyway, that wasn't why you called. No, there are a couple of things. Uh, first one, um, yesterday's BBC uh, report. It's um, easy to find. Geothermal Energy Stormont, um, Northern Ireland. Stormont Estate in Belfast and the College of Agriculture in Greenmount, County Antrim, are currently drilling a uh, two and a half kilometre borehole for geothermal, which is interesting. Mm. Presumably the, um, they've got granite then. Uh, yeah, and it's also, um, well, the Iapetta suture, which was the uh, bit that runs through Ireland, it was quite wide, so I would imagine there's uh, partly to do with that, which is the thing that runs across at Neabel. Um Mike Brennan, who's the Department uh, for Energy, said it was a milestone project, and we're mad not to do it. So there you go, another island that's going into geothermal that's uh, on the other side, so on uh, to our west, which is good. Um I attended the uh, Sister Dine meeting yesterday uh, with Trevor Moore, the chairman of My Death, My Decision, um, and there were many points raised, um, including from myself. Um, and, yeah, it was interesting, not only from the points of view for, but also against. Um, there was a chap who ha- was a, a suicide survivor who said that it devalued humanity uh, by going down this route, which is kind of echoed with Canada. Um, you know, they're they're offering people it with the argument that it only cost 1200 Canadian dollars 
to go down this route as compared with keeping them alive. So you're sort of seeing that um, that fiscal money thing going on. And also Canada has gone from nowhere to the number one um, human organ harvesting uh, trader in the world since, uh, since they brought in their assisted dying. But perhaps that's part of the reason why they're trying to get C- uh, Bill C-7 through in the next year and a half. Um, the point I raised... Um, was slightly to the side, actually, but the founder of My Death, My Decision, was also a GP called Michael Irwin. Um, and 20 years ago, in October, he travelled to the Isle of Man in 2003 to aid and abet a local man called Patrick Neen to commit suicide via taking sleeping pill um, overdose, which was uh, uh, still is contrary to the Isle of Man Criminal Law Act. And he was subsequently struck off by the British Medical Council for violating his Hippocratic Oath. But that didn't stop him in 2009 trying again um, by aiding and abetting a man called Raymond Cut Kelvin uh, to travel to Dignitas. So what, um, what's your opinion? What's, where do you stand on the assisted dying legislation, Julian? Um, I think it's not going to be feasible because it's not controllable. Um, it's too easy to get... Um, secondary legislation in um and you know i can see the argument for it but then there's another argument why was the death penalty rescinded because of mistakes and because of you know nasty things happen you know people people get sent up for something for somebody someone else and that i mean what other reason was there to get rid of the death penalty um you know that's that's almost the crux of it in some ways I do see the other side's point, but something that doesn't get discussed too much, um, the people that are talking about this are saying that they want to have the right to how they pass away in the future. But what's not being discussed is their children and their grandchildren in the future. And what if a grandchild in the far off distant future, if this assisted dying bill goes through, gets into bad company, maybe gets into drugs or emotional abuse, becomes depressed, and then if secondary legislation or tertiary legislation is in place and is offered assisted dying rather than trying to treat the root cause because of their intolerable suffering, which seems to be an option now. It was always about a foreseeable end within six months or three months, but when you start opening up already, you're seeing the parameters opening up to intolerable suffering. How do you quantify that? Um, it seems to me that it's becoming very, very vague as to exactly what this is all about. Okay. And then on top of this, I see, you know, the hospice. There's been two or three uh, news articles on your, on your website uh, talking about funding problems at the hospice. Um, and at the same time, we've got world events which are impoverishing and immiserating billions of people. It seems, it seems strange timing to offer this when people are generally getting more worried and more anxious about everything that's going on in the world, which, on the face of it, seems to be man-made in some ways. Okay, Um, so, I mean, Julian, uh, what's your gut instinct? Do you think this will get through keys? Well, I hope it doesn't. Um, And, you know, you've got this point, you know, with with, with no disrespect intended, there's been major problems getting the promenade sorted out. There's major problems with the sea terminal in um, the, the, the new ferry terminal in um, Liverpool. Uh, you've even even something on the micro scale like Southern Swimming Pool, which is basically a government run thing, just like a bus service, which hasn't opened on two days forever. Well, for a year now. Um, do we want the same government who can't get that sorted out now legislating who gets assisted dying. I mean, you've got to ask the question. All right. Julian, thanks for calling. Thanks, Andy. All right. Uh, And uh, thank you, uh, Julian. And a message in from uh, Andrew who just said, uh, yesterday uh, a caller asked why the minister doesn't ban smoking vapes in school. Um... Uh, I think it was David, actually. Uh, what it shows is, uh, did uh, David take notice of what was going on? In 2008, the Alamein government banned smoking on and in government buildings and grounds, so that includes schools. So there's already a policy uh, on smoking, banning smoking, long gone are the days of uh, smoky, um, foggy staff rooms, uh, says Andrew. I just wonder, is 
vaping the same as smoking? Does it come under the same legislation? Is vaping... Well, it's happening a lot in schools, let's just say that. And also, Andy says, uh, Douglas Beach Day this Saturday on Queen's Promenade. Is there any allocated parking at Nobles Park and perhaps shuttle buses running to the prom? Uh, Not many parking spaces on the prom now. They took them all away. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them when they did the prom up. And Bonzo's on now. Hi, Bonzo. Hi there, yes. Um, just quickly coming on to, uh, before I, I talk about what I was going to talk about, on vaping in schools. Of course, um, some people don't seem to be see- noticing what's going on in Tinwald. Because, of course, the vaping products bill is before Tinwald. Uh, which will, if I remember rightly, will ban the sale of vaping products to under 18s. Uh, the retail sell, but obviously they can't uh, control what's happening over the the internet, can they? Um, no, I mean, okay, that's more difficult. That's more difficult. But at least we're um, doing what the law can do in terms of that. Okay. In the, in the same in the same way as well, yes, somebody can sort of buy you a packet of cigarettes for the, for the, from the co-op or whatever, and then sort of hand them to you, or whichever way. Um, some people might get access to cigarettes who are who are under eighteen and wouldn't normally be, of course, able to go into the shop and buy them. It's strange how this is the the kind of law of unintended consequences. Vapes were, were meant to be a way out of smoking but they seem to be a recreational pastime for many young children. In fact, I've got messages in that say that people are vaping on the buses. Well, um, (laughs) I think Big Tobacco cottoned on to the fact that this was another another way to sell nicotine, and strangely enough, it it actually gave the better margin to do it. But I mean, this, this I mean, obviously nicotine's highly addictive. They're not regulated. Uh, you know, the the, the the doses of nicotine can be varied. You can get strong and weak and what have you. And we're we're you know we're letting children, to all intents and purposes, take nicotine. That surely can't be what we what was intended. Uh, well, no, but uh, <laughs> big tobacco and the way that big business sometimes finds ways round round things. You know, has seen the potential of this and rubbed its hands and, and gone for it. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a broader question. Anyway, coming back to Kroger, yet again, yet again, yet again. Whenever I hear people talking about Kroger, I'm always reminded of that episode of The Simpsons, where uh, Springfield somehow has managed to uh, have a windfall of some money. And then some sharp practice guy comes along, flogging them a monorail. Uh, and after a, a, you know, a lovely production number of a couple of minutes about why you should have a monorail, um, all the, everyone in the uh, electorate is somehow convinced that a monorail is the best way to spend the money rather than fixing all the potholes and, <laughs> and the drains and everything else. Um, and this is the way with Kroger. Kroger has, you know, I must confess, I'll... I'll you know, take my hat off to this, is that they've managed, you know, quite a good campaign of um, producing a, a mood within you know, a fair amount of the Manx public that, oh, we must have it, we must have it, we must have it. And giving them lots and lots of wonderful promises and everyone being, or that sector of the population, being beguiled by it. Um, but... It isn't like that at all. When we talk about the money that it will generate, or might, should I say, might generate, big if, big if if the gas is there. There are other people who say not a big if, but that's quite contestable. Um, Big if, all right, well, then it has to be extracted. Um, Progger, of course, is an extraction company. They're an exploration company. So what they would do is sell the rights on. Um, so this idea that Kroger is somehow going to in- ensure that Manx Utilities can have gas at a reduced price or something, then it's hogwash. Um, I know that, uh, indeed speaking of Manx Utilities, I know that, that uh, Tim Crookle seems to be a, a great enthusiast of Kroger, which given the fact that he's chairman of Manx Utilities, one, one might think is a little bit contradictory, and of course contradictory with um, 
uh, government energy policy has stated. And I think another thing that we must remember about Kroger is the only reason that they have a license to do anything is because it was granted before Tinwald had a vote and vote and voted on it and accepted it and accepted its policy that no further license for hydrocarbon extraction will be granted. But that's the only reason that they've got it. And now that they've got the license, they continually at every stage where they don't have enough money or they you know, can't fulfill things, then jump up and down and say, we should have the license adjusted because we must have this gas and uh, it's what everybody wants. Um, getting back to the money, all right, there are three ways in which the Isle of Man would get money out of it. First is the wellhead tax, or right, petroleum weather, uh, revenue tax. That comes under FERSA right, with the UK. Likewise, any VAT share would come under FERSA. Now, we could charge a royalty. I haven't seen anything that Kroger says about what a uh, potential royalty structure might be, or indeed anything from the government about what a potential royalty structure might be. I'm not quite sure whether there's even the legal basis at the moment for such a royalty structure. But, uh, um, you know, I, I, I await somebody telling me that, that there is somewhere. Um, but at either one of those three points, well, at two of those points, the two points of petroleum revenue tax and VAT, well, the UK government are involved. If there was lots of money coming in, do you think they'd let us keep it? Oh, no, of course not. Um, they'd be reducing the first share one to one. And if we were charging royalty, they'd keep reducing the first, <laughs> the first share uh, down on a one to one basis. So, I mean, are you seriously so, saying, so, uh, Bonzo, you think that the, the UK government, if we exploited mineral rights from our territorial waters, albeit landed in the UK, that they would choose to sequestrate some of the funds? Well, it's not a question of sequestrating, it's a question of they're entitled to, under, for, uh, under revenue sharing. They're quite entitled to do that. Okay. And this seems to be something which is, which is lost on people. OK, all right. Well, we watch and we wait, Bonzo. I'm sure there'll be uh, many more twists in this tale. Thanks for calling. Yes, indeed. Thanks. Okay. Bye. All right, good to hear from you. Ruth said, Andy, uh, the toilet twinning was done through the One World Centre. They were at St John's, but now work from the Promenade Church. There is a Facebook page if you want to look. I'd never heard of toilet twinning, but uh, now we have. We've heard that the gas field will be a great idea, says Gary. Uh, as long as the government take the same attitude as Colonel Gaddafi towards its own people. Oh, I don't quite know what you mean by that, Gary. Uh, Kroger's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for the Isle of Man, says Brian, which could potentially clear debt and providing... I thought we couldn't run a debt. Anyway, uh, provide income for essential infrastructure for the future, particularly if we wish to achieve an increase in population. It would be madness, says Brian, not to proceed. And the project the project has my wholehearted support. Of course, it doesn't involve any government, i.e. public funding. I began to struggle with the stairs, but I didn't want to leave our family home. So my daughter told me about Acorn stair lifts and their new showroom in Douglas. I was able to try the stair lifts and find the right one for me and the home I love. They were so friendly. The whole process was hassle-free and they offered the whole package from installation to servicing. Choose the island's first choice for stair lifts. Acorn Stair Lift, South Quay, Douglas. Call Acorn Stair Lifts now on 672-414 or call into our Douglas showroom. It's good to talk. It's how we get things done. So when you apply for a personal loan from Black Horse, you'll get support from one of our relationship managers who's there to talk you through your application. You could borrow up to £50,000 with up to seven years to pay it back and you could receive your money within 24 hours of approval. Ready to talk? Go to blackhorseoffshore.co.uk to request a call back today. Finance subject to status. Applicants must be 18 or over. What a challenging few years for all businesses. At Nicola Bowker & Co, we're proud to be in your corner. But even more proud of the local businesses who have adapted with new technology and prepared for the future. Nicola Bowker & Co. Ramsey Garden Centre opens seven days a week for roses, shrubs, trees, perennials and an array of pond plants. 
Or if it's fire pits or solar lights, there's never been a better time to visit Ramsey Garden Centre. Hospice Isle of Man's lottery is now bigger and better than ever before. With huge rollover jackpots of up to £10,000 and 32 guaranteed cash prizes to be won every single month for just £5 a ticket. What are you waiting for? It's the fun, easy way to support hospice and the people we care for. So sign up now at hospice.org.im slash lottery or call 672222. Players must be 16 or over. See website for terms and conditions. The Man in Line with Andy Wint. Val's with us now. Hi, Val. Hi. Um, I went on to the endoscopy ward yesterday at Nobles and, oh, my God, they were wonderful with me. Absolutely wonderful. I c- they couldn't do enough for me. They put me at ease and... I just, I just couldn't thank them enough, so I'd like you to thank them for me. No, uh, and that's one thing I think that gets lost, Val, is that uh, obviously Manx Care, the hospital and medical practitioners will only usually get noticed when something goes wrong or somebody gets yeah. what they perceive as poor service. But routinely, the vast majority of stuff that's carried out is absolutely top-notch, and we're happy to put that on record, Val. Thank you. They, could, they couldn't have been any better. Honestly, if I'd gone private, I wouldn't have gone any better. <laughs> well, you pay for so, it anyway, remember, in taxes. Yeah, so you pay yeah, for it. I know. All but, right. Um, okay. Good to thank, hear from you. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, Not thank at all. you. Not at all, Val. Thanks for that. Smoking is defined by inhaling smoke. So pipes and cigars, cigarettes, vapes, crack pipes and bongs. Bongs are all banned from government grounds. Do you really think it just meant cigarettes? I don't know. Is vaping... I mean, vaping seems to be happening absolutely everywhere at the moment. It really is a, a sort of social phenomenon. There was a news article the other day, says text of 531, that children as young as nine were suffering from damaged lungs, collapsed lungs, bleeding lungs because of vaping. Uh, Perhaps payment for care needs to be sorted out before assisted dying is agreed. Otherwise, the elderly may choose to die to protect their children's inheritance. We're getting into some weird territory here with this, uh, what your thoughts are. Will there be donkeys on the beach on Saturday? No, Mike, I'm sorry there won't be, but uh, you can... I don't know. Is there seaweed collecting? Um... Uh, uh, let's have a look here. Um, what right do some people have uh, to stop those who want to end their suffering from having the choice? I think it's arrogance from people who do that. Uh, it's, uh, it's the people will make their own choices. And, uh, well, assisted dying is legal in many places. There are many jurisdictions, obviously, in um, Basel, in Switzerland, where Dignitas is. They are making a living out of it. They're making a business out of it. Um, I've just returned from a trip to Iceland, H, on 768, and thought one of the government schemes was interesting enough to share. They offer paid school holiday employment to students between the age of 13 and 18. It involves the maintenance of the local environment, including painting, planting and tidying. Part of the reasoning behind it is that if youngsters are involved in caring for their environment, they might be less likely to vandalise it. Hmm... Thanks for that. If anybody else has seen that in uh, Iceland, we'd uh, like to hear that as well. I was at the meeting last night, and uh, the point that Julian raised was firmly rebutted, says Steve, and yet surprisingly, um, it's on. Um, thank you, Steve. Uh, what's your opinion, though, Steve? That's more to the point. Uh, what is your opinion regarding assisted dying? Do you think it's something the Isle of Man should go down the route of, that we should have legislation to allow people to end their own life if all the proper safeguards are met? One contributor at last night's meeting commented on how the consultation didn't even mention euthanasia, which is definitely in the bill. Is this true? Uh, That's 753. Uh, We... uh, uh, Let's have a look here. Geothermal works because we have an earth core, an earth core between us. That's the reason geothermal works. We'll find out more about geothermal, I'm sure. It just seems there aren't many instances of it in the UK. Obviously, uh, the Eden Project in Cornwall has got one. 
And there's that small one, the domestic one, the one that's running a kind of housing project in Southampton, although it has been bubbling away since the 1980s, so uh, obviously there's nothing wrong with that. Why haven't the MHKs and the Tsao supported a much-needed hotel for the South at the Golf Links? Ramsey has or had a hotel, of course. They knocked down the, uh, the Hydro and up came the new one, but nothing as yet for the Golf Links. We'll see what happens. That's it tomorrow. David Ashford, MHK, on Man in Line. And thanks to Chris Quirk on the phones today. W-I-N-T.